thank you so much all for coming. We're going to get started with a few words from Mariana from Turnberry and then we'll get going. Hi everyone, we wanted to welcome you to Turnberry Ocean Club. Uh, it's great to see everyone here. I know we've been under construction for uh, close to two years. Completion is the end of next year. So welcome back if you haven't been here and uh, welcome if, uh, yeah, if it's your first time. We have a full model residence. Uh, three bedroom that we'd love to show you. We have a full team of agents here. So besides myself, we speak all the languages. Farida and Natalie are part of our team. Say hello. Um, so here, if you have clients that are looking for something in the house, we'd love to show you what we're building. It's a tremendous building. We've uh, been developing in uh, Sunny Isles in Miami for over 50 years, and it's the best one yet. So pleasure to have you, and uh, let's start the discussion. Thank you. So thank you all so much for being here. This is the most incredible turnout I've ever seen. So thanks again for coming out this morning and being here with us. Um, I wanted to thank Termary also for helping me with this event and the beautiful presentation and the food and also to these lovely ladies. Um, I've been watching them and been so impressed with everything that they're doing and how they're engaging with their audiences and um, you know, just being out there and being comfortable with social media and I thought that this was such an important discussion for real estate agents um, and other industry professionals. So if you don't know me and you don't know the Emory, I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Eileen Lavin and I founded the Emory. Last year on my real estate journey, I knew that it was really important to make connections and to network. So I would go to any and every networking event I could, and I just wasn't making those connections. So I decided to take it upon myself and make just an intimate networking group. I did a breakfast at my house, uh, reached out to my local community, put it on Facebook, and 40 women showed up to my house. 40 women with the same struggles, the same stories, that they also wanted to grow a business, grow their brand, and connect with other women, and have fun doing it. Work should be fun, and I think that when you're around your women, you know, women that motivate you and that inspire you, it's, it's a really amazing thing. So that's where it all started and 40 women turned into 400 and quickly 1,000 and now we're almost 2,000 strong um, on our social community. And during that process, I thought how much better would it be if we actually had a place, a place that we could be every day, even once a week to attend events like these to be together, we can work on our own stuff, but we can also be inspired and motivated from the other women that are there. So that's um, kind of the journey that took me to the Emory. It's a 4,000 square foot space. We'll be open in a few short weeks. We hope you can all join us. And this is what's gonna be going on at the Emory. Events like these constantly, industry leaders, women that are really willing and want to help other women grow their business and learn things like social media, tax, accounting, just anything that you really need to grow your business, that's what we're gonna be doing at the Emory. So if you have any questions, please you know, catch me after the event. Uh, we also have founding member boxes that you can take to see. We have um, amazing members that contributed to those. So without further ado, please um, take a moment to introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, I'm Dina Goldentair. I'm with Douglas Element Real Estate. I've been in the business for 14 years. Um, I'm in the Sports and Entertainment Division and I'm also in-house sales at 87 Park, which is a competitor to this project. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Mariana Shulka. I'm with Sotheby's and uh, Turnberry since the beginning and uh, hopefully to the end. So we'd love to, to see you back here with clients. Hello everyone, my name is Alyssa Morgan Janicheski. I'm with the Jill's team on Coldwell Banker, Miami Beach. Hi everybody, my name is Bethany Martinez. I'm a broker associate with Related ISG. I've been in real estate for about five years and I specialize in residential and I stem from a hospitality background, so I love connecting with people and I think that's how I grew my career. So I'm so happy to be here to share that with you guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rochelle Duvalier. I am with Douglas Elliman Real Estate. I've been in real estate for about 15 years. I practice primarily in Boca Raton. So we're going to get started with why everyone's here, and we're going to start talking all things social media. 
So the first question that I have is why do you believe that social media is such an important platform to integrate into your everyday business strategy? I think social media is important because it's how you make money. Uh, the majority of my leads these days are coming from my Instagram, uh, more so than referrals, more so than sign calls. Um, and Instagram also kind of livens up what I do, so instead of always focusing on just uh, buyers and sellers and listings and the everyday go, just adding a little bit more of a fun element, like you said, I think it's made me enjoy my job more because I have this creative outlet that's also making me money. Um, social media, you know, first of all, we advertise in a lot of places, but the thing that, yes, a little louder, okay, so. <laughs> um, why it's important is because everyone is on social media, so, you know, we here, it's more than just a building, it's more than a product, what we really sell is the lifestyle, and I have a lot of fun living the term real lifestyle, everything from golf, tennis, you know, a marina, private airport, all of those, so, it's important for brokers and clients to constantly be engaged and to see what it is that we're, you know, what the future will be. And this is a good way to showcase it, so. So I love social media because it allows me to get in front of my audience multiple times a day. Um, compared to other forms of marketing, you know, an e-blast that goes out weekly or a monthly mailer, now we're able to get in front of our audience and our clients multiple times a day and push our marketing in front of them multiple times a day. Well, one thing that I like to highlight is that social media is free. I mean, it's free advertising, free marketing. You can basically paint a picture for everybody out there of what your everyday lifestyle is, and you don't have to spend a dollar. So we all know in real estate marketing is extremely expensive. Mailers, all these things that you put into advertising, and the fact that we have a platform that's free that you can use, if you're not using it, you're doing yourself a disservice. You and your business, because I know tons of businesses that are growing and making a lot of money by using social media and not even spending marketing dollars anywhere else. So that's that's the one important takeaway that I can say. <laughs> I'll share later. Um, so I love real estate, I love social media, but I super, super have a soft spot in my heart for statistics. So if something's not effective, I'm probably pretty much not interested in that. This is a business after all. So the stat goes like this. 87 times a day, the average person does what? That's right, they check their phone. So I'm above average. Probably a lot of people in this room are above average on that, and some are less. But at the end of the day, people are checking their phones. At the end of the day, real estate is a relationship business. So Dina said the majority of her leads are coming from social media, right? I'm using social media more to deepen existing relationships. So Florida is a very seasonal market, right? So I have clients who I call friends, friend clients. Anyone? <laughs> Hashtag friends. Go over and use it. Anyway, super cute. There are people who are only down here a few weeks a year. So how do you stay top of mind with those people? Well, I do ridiculous Instagram stories, and I know who's watching me, even if they don't know that I know. So you can really use social media not only to cast a wide net, but to go deeper with people you already have relationships with. Thank you. So on the topic of social, and I know everyone has their phones out, if you want to hashtag the Emory social so you can find all of this great content and pictures, please use that hashtag. <laughs> um, so my next question is, which social media platform have you had the most success with and why? Instagram, because that's what I enjoy. Um, I was never really a Facebook person, uh, so naturally it's just easier to do what you already liked. Uh, my page was private for a very long time, um, so when I made the transition to make it a public page and use it as a source to draw business, I just went to the outlet that I was already comfortable with. Yeah, definitely Instagram with the stories. It's just so much fun, and you get to share something new every day or multiple times a day, so highly recommend it. Um, Instagram by far, and it actually all started about a year and a half ago. I had a call from an agent from Honolulu, Hawaii, and I answered the phone and she's like, Alyssa, you know, I've been following you on Instagram for some time. Congratulations on your last sale and your 30 under 30 award. I was just in Miami and I have two referrals for you and those referrals totaled over $15 million worth. So that was my first aha moment that I was going to spend time on it. 
I think we can all say Instagram. Um, Instagram is definitely the platform that I utilize the most, but I link everything to Instagram. So from Instagram, I'm posting on Facebook. From Facebook, I'm sharing um, to LinkedIn. I mean, I can try to connect all of the platforms together so that I'm not wasting just one post on one platform. I think it's really important to make sure that you set them all up. I even have YouTube, so whatever videos that I create on YouTube, I share them on Facebook and vice versa. And I've noticed that there's a market on YouTube that's different from the market on Facebook, that's different from the market on Instagram. So if you already are creating one type of content, just utilize it on all the platforms. It's not, it's not, it doesn't take that much time to have them all set up so that they can all work cohesively. And I mean, just like her, I received tons of referrals on Instagram through other agents that I build relationships, and those are my referral partners now. So whenever someone has a client leaving California, coming to Miami, they send them directly to me. And three of those clients, I, weren't, I wasn't even able to facilitate myself because they were West Palm Beach, so I referred them out to an agent over there, collected my 25% referral fee, never even saw the client. But all of that came through Instagram and being present and showing people my day-to-day -day life, what I do, and that they can trust me because they see, you know, pretty much everything that I do throughout the day. Okay, I'm gonna go in another direction with this. So the majority of my clientele, with some exceptions, I'm in the sports and entertainment division along with Dina. And so when we get into the young athletes and their families and their teams, these people are on Instagram. Okay, these are our Instagram peeps. I'm in Boca. We have some, you know, older demographic who I love. Hi, my Boca peeps, I love you. And they are watching me on Facebook right now. And when I see them next week on the golf course, they're probably gonna say, Rochelle, I saw you on TV. <laughs> because they think it's TV. So it's really super, um, probably wise, to think about what is your target demographic where are you practicing real estate? Who are your people you're already connected with and how do you deepen those relationships? So in my case, I do both Instagram and Facebook, but I have to be really honest, more business for me is coming from Facebook right now. People who are actually buying, who actually are feeling connected with me on Facebook. But I say go deep on both. Mm -hmm. sure. Thanks. So let's talk strategy. How much time do you spend on your social media strategy? Um, I'm probably spending about an hour and a half a day, but really that turns into uh, an evening uh, engagement, and my poor husband has to see me just come home from work and do my second job, which is social media. Um, I used to post right in the middle of the day as something was happening, but I realized that the quality of those posts, they weren't good, because I'd be with a client and while they'd go look in the other room, I'd try to make a quick story to post. Um, and then I was just putting stuff up because it was in the moment. So what I realized is I'd rather do a good post, I'd rather make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing, that the right hashtags are there. So I do all my stuff at night, and depending on the time of the week, when I wake up in the morning, I have you know either hundreds or thousands of likes. Um, so I'm definitely, I would say probably like 10 to 12 hours a week. It depends on the day and depends what's going on and how fun something is to feature, but uh, usually about an hour a day. And I kind of, unlike Dina, I just go as it uh, as it's happening. I think it's more interesting to some clients. So. so I time block an hour each day to kind of create content, get inspired by content, um, engage with my audience. Um, but it ends up being probably just like Dina said, a whole evening because I really get into it. I'm very passionate about it. But it's something that I don't even think about really consuming so many hours as it does because I just thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, so I'm a little bit different. I document daily. I mean, from the moment that I wake up to the second that I go to sleep, the phone is always there. It's easy, it's accessible. And where I saw the true growth come from my social media was when I started documenting the daily activities. I mean, I get so much interaction and engagement by the simple affirmations that I post every morning and then d down to the clients that I'm scheduling, you know, talking about those appointments during, after, beginning, middle, end. 
and I feel like people are following me along the journey. And I mean, people have reached out to me that have been following me since last year, and they're like, you're doing so many amazing things, I can't believe it, I remember when you used to do this, and I mean, I don't even know these people. So the funny thing is, is like, people are following me on this journey, I think they get a kick out of like, what is Bethany gonna do today? And it keeps me going, so I find that um, I used to worry a lot about what my posts looked like and how they were all coordinated with color. And I just said, okay, I'm not going to worry so much about that. I'm going to get a nice picture, not an ugly picture. Blurry, you know, no color. But I focus more on my stories because that's where I get the most engagement. And that's where I feel like people truly connect. They're able to see me and what I'm doing. And they're able to follow me along and ask me questions. And I respond. And I really interact with all of my followers, which can be time consuming so obviously my work is first real estate is first but if your phone is always there it's just kind of something that I've gotten used to and it's just it's with me all day long so I can't even give you an hour or, or how long it is it's just become my a part of my daily routine but I think that's what works and that's why my followers enjoy following me because it's it's organic it's you know they're with me along for the ride what was the question it was how, how much all these time do you spend on um, time? Oh, got it. Okay, how much time? So I have a team, and um, when I first started with social media, I thought, oh, I did put the prettiest picture and the prettiest video and everything, so perfect, perfect, and like 30 hashtags. I was going to say 47, but we know that you can't do 47. <laughs> so what I found out really quickly was that that content people kind of didn't care. Like, you could do the hottest listing ever, the most beautiful, well-produced video, and people kind of didn't care. So now I have people who kind of keep that going, like the new listing and all that jazz, and in just a few minutes a day, like on um, live story, et cetera, I get way higher engagement. It's way more fun. It's like playtime. I get to make a little video. So true story, yesterday, I got in my car. I was convinced I was late. You're laughing because you guys know. Anybody else know what I'm about to say? Okay, so I have two followers in the audience. So, <laughs> at Rochelle TV, you're paying a lot of fun. She knows. Okay, so I get in my car, I'm convinced I'm late, and what do I do? Put the lipstick on in the rear view mirror, I 95, stressed out. Pull up, I'm like, wow, I thought there was going to be a parking problem. <laughs> nope, I drove 45 minutes to an hour to find out that it was the wrong day. So what did I do? I grabbed my camera and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make this super fun. So I made a really ridiculous little video about, duh, and then I did a poll. So if anyone's using Instagram polls, if you're not, check it out. I get super engagement from that. And the question was something like, have you ever gone to an event on the wrong day? And it opened up all these dialogues in private messenger with clients, friends, other agents. Anyway, again, deepening those relationships. Thank you. So that is a good intro That's to the next question. Like 90 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So creating engagement. How do you connect with your audience? How do you engage with them? Um, and how do you attract them? Well, I try to show my personality. Uh, like Rochelle said, I get a lot more engagement uh, on things that have to do with uh, something funny or my personal life. Um, not as much on just listed, just sold, pending sale. Um, those certainly, you know, people say congratulations or sometimes they say how much if I leave out the price to kind of draw a question or sometimes I'll leave out a neighborhood um, to, so people would ask me where is this house. Um, so at times I don't really think about it. I'll post, you know, a picture of our a food plate like so many of us do and then actually food I think gets me the most engagement. <laughs> uh, people definitely comment more on food than on uh, anything else I post. Um, but I, I, I try to be clever about it and think if I leave out a piece of info and someone's interested, that could cause them to send me a DM to ask me where it is or where I'm at. Um, and then the polls. I think polls are good. Um, and I think engagement also directing people um, to work within your platform from stories to hard posts. Uh, you know, putting a story up and saying, see more for this, I think is another way to create further engagement. So I really love what I do and I feel very passionate about it and so when we have different things going on it's really nice to be able to share it with the people that follow me and my friends and basically my friends and my clients are like Rochelle said. Hashtag um, friends. <laughs> exactly that. No. So um, it's a cool way that you know you can share something so instantaneously and on such a wide platform because everyone's on it 
and most likely they're watching you. Sometimes you might not realize it, so that's something to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, it's it's really cool, and the new era. It's just you know everyone wants instant content, and that's where we are now on Instagram, and especially the stories. It's the way to go. So. So when it comes to um, listings, featuring my listings to get engagement, I get the most engagement through story. So whether that's just me walking through, um, me personally even filming and pointing out like three selling points, but leaving something out that's a big detail, like the price or the address, so that they're even the slightest bit interested, they do have to inquire, and then I know that they're thinking um, of, of buying. So that's the way that I engage the most with my listings. but. On a personal level, I think that you know, posting personal is the best. Your interests, restaurants that you go to, leaving you know questions for um, personal has been the most engaging. I think what's important about engagement is to actually engage with others. It's not really about them engaging with you. It's you also showing interest in the people that are following you and the people that you're following. Where I started seeing the most success in Instagram is when I stopped caring who I followed and I just went after like, who's doing real estate in other markets? Who's active? Who's posting? Who has 10K followers and up? And I started engaging with all of those people and then they started engaging back and with, algor with algorithms, Instagram knows when you're engaging with others and when they're engaging with you. I would tag other agents in, in topics that I heard them talking about on my stories. They would repost my stories on their story because it's like I'm giving them a shout out. I'm giving them recognition in my market. So then they go and repost the same story on theirs and now all of their market sees me in Miami. And these are agents in Georgia and California so there's no competition. You know, they're actually excited that I'm sharing something that I learned from them. So where I saw the most success is actually engaging with other people, liking, commenting. And then when people would comment on my page, I wouldn't just, you know, ignore it. I'd say thank you or that's awesome and just kind of, you know, ask questions and keep that going. It can get time consuming, but while you're already there, if you truly care about engaging with these people, that's what you have to do. You have to also engage as someone on using the platform. And that's also what happened with just events because we all reposted each other's posts, tagged each other. <laughs> yeah. I kind of created a little community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I DM'd everyone pretty much on this panel. And then you guys connected me and each other. So, you know, that was a little side note, but that's how we connected. So I, you know, reached out and you have to feel comfortable to, you know, reach out to people and connect with them through Instagram. I mean, that's what it's there for. And I mean, you can't be scared. Yeah. You can't be scared to reach out to someone or to ask them a question in your DM or just to try to connect because I think sometimes we're intimidated by you know what we perceive of the person on their page, but maybe just a question and just a connection, maybe a copy, anything to try to just reach out to that person will open up a conversation instead of just you know a like and then that's it. So in terms of engagement, I like offense way more than defense, just in general. I'm an offense girl. So I like to look at certain people who I follow, who are particularly people I know who are gonna buy and sell in my core market. I do also do a lot with other geographic regions, what I call feeder markets. So my New York agents, my New Jersey agents, my Long Island agents, even out to you know Aspen in California. So I stay really connected with them. I like to stay in tune with what they're doing in network. But in terms of buyers and sellers, I like to watch their feeds, watch their lives, and reach out and engage. So sometimes I actively will go out, particularly somebody I'm trying to gain as a client. So you know you've gone on that listing pitch or you've met with that potential buyer, and you just haven't quite put it together. I get really hot and heavy on their on their feet. It sounds like a stalker thing, but it's actually really friendly, super friendly about it. But I would say go on offense and actually reach out to them about things that they're talking about and what they're doing and what's interesting to them. And I stay away from what I'm doing and my listings and you know how fabulous I am. Thank you. Awesome answers. So one of the biggest questions I've gotten basically since this whole thing started was should I have one account or two, one business, one personal? And if I did decide to have one, how much of my personal life should I include and what would that look like? That's a great question. Um, I, I have one account because 
I, I would overthink it as far as do I post that on business, do I post that on my personal page. When I did make my page uh, public and realize that I'm going to focus on using it as a source of business, I did have to go on my feet and clean it up from the last five years. So it was no more bikini pictures, no more like pictures at the club, like this is now my business page. So it definitely becomes a more concentrated effort that if I post this, is, could this offend um, someone that might want to work with me. So I'm sure I don't get it right all the time because um, I still want to show my personality uh, and have a sense of humor about things, but I definitely think about, you know, is this skirt too short for um, the people I'm trying to, you know, work with. <laughs> <laughs> so my life and my work are very intertwined, so I have one account. I, uh, really enjoy what I do and I think you know especially it's important to show your passion so most of us in real estate we like what we do right so and it's a great way to show especially clients that might not live in Florida and, and brokers that might be from other states when it gets cold it's a great way to see hey it's time to visit Miami again um, there's a lot of fun things going on here the city has a lot of uh, different events and anywhere you go so I think one account is kind of nice, and it's good to be personable. And if you have everything separate, then maybe, you know, they either have to follow both of you or, um, yeah, so I recommend one. And uh, just have fun with it, that's the most important thing. So I actually have two accounts. I have a personal and a business, but I use my business account as kind of a website within Instagram. So you can see, you know, my listings, track record, community-wise, and then I do most of my engaging and connecting on my personal, and anything that I post on my story on my business, I repost on my personal. Um, I've had both accounts for some time now, but if I were new, I would recommend going with one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I started off with two with one personal and then one business, and then I realized that that was way too much work, and to be highly active on one was already enough in a full-time job. So I kept my business one because I thought, I had already grew a following on that one as well. So I said to myself, I'm gonna keep it, put it to the side, because there may be an organization or something that I wanna do in the future that I can use it for. So I just did exactly what they talked about, cleaned it up, I wanted, I mean, from the second that I started promote, promoting myself on social media, I wanted to make sure that when someone saw me, they saw what I do, who I am and what I do, and make it very, very simple. So uh, everything that I post is about what I'm passionate about, what my job is, real estate related, and then the organizations that I'm involved with that are also all real estate related. And then now that I have another account, I'm able to use that one for this other organization that I'm creating, which is really exciting, and then it's Females for Profit, so then now I have them all together, and that one's all about women entrepreneurs, so I don't have to post anything real estate related on that one, and I can just use my personal one for all business. But it's true, you wanna make sure that people understand your message. So if you're constantly pr promoting content that has nothing to do with your business, if business is what you're trying to promote, I highly re recommend thinking about that when you do post things or when you wanna you know, use one Instagram to you for business. So. Pink Palm Group, pinkpalm.tv. And that is all properties, all like what we're doing, track record, almost like a website, like you said, within Instagram. And I do personal, pretty much for twins mm -hmm. on Instagram, anyway. Um, so the one thing I'll add is that on my business page, I have fewer followers, um, which I think that that's probably primarily because on my personal page, I'm way more engaging, I do way more personal things, way more behind the scenes things. So like, let's say we're filming a new listing, we're doing a beautiful video. So on the business page, you'll see the highly produced Boom, there it is. And on my personal page, you'll see me behind the scenes going, no, fly the drone over there. You know, and it's a lot more interesting for people. Um, I also use the business page to test out ideas sometimes. So if it totally bombs on my business page, then I just delete it and don't repost on my personal. <laughs> So we have also a lot of questions about just fear of social media exposure. So what advice can you give our audience and just everyone watching about the fear that they may have on just social do media? <laughs> <laughs> just do it, like anything in life. Start small, keep going, progress, and it will come a lot more naturally. So that's probably the most important thing uh, to keep in mind. 
I think that the biggest fear most people have are their followers. And they think, I can't get to you know a million followers or a thousand followers. But at the end of the day, the followers don't really make all the difference. My advice would be is to take your client list and find all of them on social media and then create content so that you're staying top of mind um, to your client base and take it from there. Um, I think if you're fearing being on social media, you should fear more about going out of business because it's like, why would you fear promoting yourself about what you're passionate about and about your daily activities on what you do? I mean, if you're someone that's authentic and you get up every day and work hard and are passionate about your clients and are passionate about what you do, you should be proud to share that. You know, I think maybe there's like a fear of camera shyness where you just, you know, you want to make sure you look good. Hello, Instagram has a thousand filters. You can look good when you wake up in the morning. You know, you just throw a filter on and you're ready to go. You know, so I mean, there's so many things that can change fear, but more so, um, I think now I've grown a, a following that they kind of like, they're expecting the daily routine. So sometimes I fear letting them down. I know it sounds really weird, but I fear, um, you know, I, I did cold calling once and I did a live about it and I asked people to hold me accountable and had so many people write me the next week like, I haven't seen you cold call. Are you even doing it? And now my fear is, oh my gosh, not living to what I said I was gonna do, you know? So I think it's another form of accountability. So just removing that fear and knowing that there's a, a lot of other people out there doing what you do and we can all connect. And we have this amazing platform that connects us with entrepreneurs and people in our industry and we can share and join in on each other's successes versus being fearful of what anybody thinks because it really doesn't matter what anybody thinks. So just remove fear if you're even thinking about getting on social media or you want to grow your platforms. Just remove fear. Just do it. Try it out. That's the only way you're going to know and, and, and see if it really is going to work for you. Okay, maybe slightly off topic, but I'm going there. Bethany brought up something that I think is really important. So who remembers their first listing pitch? Okay, nobody wants you to participate. Are we all <laughs> And it was my first Instagram live, and somebody asked me recently about speaking. They do a decent amount of speaking, and they said, "Oh, I get so nervous every time. What do you What do you think I should do?" I said, "I think you should do it more." And it's like a very simple thing, but do it more. Get used to the way you look on camera, because you do look funny on camera to you. To everyone else, you just look like you. But I used to get really hung up, and so I would like craft this whole thing or whatever. And then I would show up and they'd be like, Rochelle. <laughs> right? So don't don't do that. So get comfortable with what you look like. Get comfortable with who you are and it's gonna spill over into other areas of your business, Absolutely. I promise. Absolutely. Thank you. So you know focusing on your strategy and you know giving the audience some advice. How many times a day do you post? Do you use hashtags, love them or hate them? You know, what, can, what advice can you give everyone on your real Instagram strategy? I'm gonna let the other girls uh, cover, you know, the, the hashtags and the sponsor posts and all that stuff. But one thing I started doing lately that I kind of want to talk about is, um, it was in theme with when you met with someone but you, they haven't quite signed the listing, they haven't quite bought and you're in this courting phase and you know they're your client, but you know, you're in this in-between phase. So you I, know it, but they know it. Right, they might not know. Um, I start tailoring my post towards that client yeah. because I can see they're watching my story. So if I'm going up in a, for a listing on the Venetian Islands, all of a sudden I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff on the Venetian Islands, you know? So I'm stealing that. Yeah, so <laughs> When I see Alyssa post a good post, like whether it's the layout of it or the content, I'm going to go with it. I'm <laughs> inspired. Yeah. Um, so I think that that is one way to kind of subliminally get into someone's head. So besides hashtags, uh, the other thing that I think is important are geolocations. Like if something's happening in Sunny Isles, you want to make the world aware that this is where it's happening and that's what we found uh, works really well. Wherever you are, you know, a new restaurant or a new place or whatever it may be, it's cool to share with your with your followers, your friends, so uh, do more. So 
So I'm going to piggyback off of that. And tagging location um, has been, you know, gives me a lot of results because when I do tag the location, um, I go through and see everybody that has been there and start engaging with those people. So, you know, if I get, if I have a listing at the one hotel in Homes and I'm talking to those people um, that are there right now and getting in front of them. So locations, I think, have been giving me great results. That's smart. Um, so I did something in the beginning of the year. Um, I just started looking at what age, other agents were doing in different markets, and I started connecting with agents that had 10K plus followers. And I started interacting with them, asking them questions, and just you know letting them know who I am and what I do and if they ever needed anybody in Miami. And then, like again, sharing some stories, tagging them in certain things, then they would repost the things that I tagged them in. And when you think about it, it's strategic because I'm not just going after the agent with 500 followers, I'm going after the agent with 10K followers. So anytime that they re-tag me or post me in something, now I'm visible to their network. So that's something that I did just to you know build relationships with agents on the outside of Miami market or South Florida. And then from there, I just started seeing it, it started growing, you know, because imagine all these other people that are following them are now seeing me. So that's kind of a trick that I did to get more um, visibility outside of this market with other agents, and it worked really, really well. And then again, you know, um, going through their stories, seeing what they do, asking questions, you know, using the polls. There's, there's so many things that you can do, and definitely hashtags. Whenever there's something trending or whenever there is you know, something new to talk about, a new location, making sure you put one thing that, have, that relates in your hashtags. And that way, you, when people search through that hashtag, you're able to pop up on the search feed. So yeah, that's like my little trick for the day. So you asked about hashtags and frequency. I got some advice when I first went on Instagram, and it was, 30 hashtags every time, make them the same ones, cut and paste, open your market, right? I don't think that works. And I don't know if the algorithm changed or if I got bad advice or if at some point I just decided it was lame. It could be all of those things. I will say that I have, I think, been doing better in terms of engagement. I've been more selective about my hashtags and I've really tried to think for a minute, okay, who do I want to reach with this post? and what hashtags might they be following? So if you don't already follow certain hashtags like hashtag Boca Raton, I follow that one. So anybody follows you know, or posts hashtag Boca Raton, I see it. So I use hashtags in both directions and then in my, on my posts, I only use a couple and I try to get more strategic about it. In terms of frequency, you asked? No. Uh... That's okay, I'll just I'll answer yeah. the question I want to answer. Okay. <laughs> And she said it a couple of times, and I'm a person with, I don't have 10K followers. I don't have oodles and oodles of followers. But I bet you I know a higher percentage of my followers, IRL, in real life, than most do. And why I want to bring that up is I, I think that there is sometimes an idea that we should have oodles and oodles of followers. But I think that you can also be really effective in the social media game if you go inch wide, mile deep. Just go really deep with the people you have, and the other numbers will come. So I've given myself permission not to worry about that, and I encourage you to do the same. Thank you. So unsponsored posts, short and sweet, but have you used them? Do you find them effective? Anybody? Sure. Right. I like sponsored posts when I post a picture or content that doesn't get a lot of likes, that I'm like sad about it. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll pay you know, anywhere from 50 to $75 to sponsor it, and then you know it goes up probably like 15 to 20% as far as viewership and likes. Um, I don't know that I actually get leads from those sponsored posts because it's hard to say when someone reaches out to you if they came from your general post or from you uh, boosting it, uh, but it makes me feel better because I am vain in that way and I want to see more likes on my posts. <laughs> actually, I, I'd like to say the flip side of that. I got some advice from a social media super influencer at one point at a conference who said, if you have, you know, you put up a post and you pretty quickly know if it's a unicorn or a donkey, right? So if it's a donkey, let it go. <laughs> this is usually advice I got. And then if it's a unicorn, like boost it, boost it, right? And have more people see it and they're going to see something that people have gravitated toward anyway. In, in my own business, I, ha I sponsor things that I want a teeny tiny segment of the market to see. 
and it'll be something like usually strategic, like I'm trying to push an event or a specific listing or something very specific in a very narrow area. And so, you know, you can select your target audience and go narrow, narrow, super niche. I found that to be the most effective, and I'm also super frugal, so. <laughs> so we've tried them uh, a couple times, but realistically, I think geolocations and also hashtag like Turnberry Life, you get more organic followers, which is more important than paying for people to like you. Um, it's nice. I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice post. You want them to like but, you. <laughs> but you want the real people to like you, the ones that know you, and the ones that are interested in what you're doing, not just, you know. We like you. Thank you. I have not used the sponsored um, post, but I do spend a lot of time, you know, engaging with my, my network. You know, so. I actually used sponsored posts to get rid of some listings that were hard to sell. They were mostly rentals and they were unique rentals, so they probably didn't cater to the everyday person looking for a rental here in Miami. So I would sponsor them and like through Facebook and Instagram to people in New York or other cities that I thought would be relocating. And then also for events, I did sponsor posts for events and it worked really, really well because you're able to, you know, say what market you wanted to go to, whether it's men, female, what age range, how far out in Miami. So I got a lot of good feedback when I sponsored some posts for events. But yeah, I think it's great that we even have that option to sponsor because again, it's like marketing, except you know when you pay for marketing for an advertising company, it's a lot more expensive. Here you can say, oh, I want $30, $5 a day, and it, you know Facebook and Instagram will take care of it for you. So it's very cost effective. So going on to Bethany's answer, I actually, because you follow somebody or you engage with them, I mean, there's different ways that you could use Facebook ads, but I saw her face, um, the Females for Profit event constantly. Like, I'd be scrolling because I obviously follow her. I engage with her. So I do think it's great, you know, if you do, like, a little bit of a boost because you can target a very specific audience, people that are already engaging with you. It's... It could be twenty five dollars. I mean, I don't know what you yeah, spent, but $30. it's a really. I saw it every day, multiple times a day. So like, I knew what was going on. It was a video. Yeah. It was awesome. And it was only three days prior to the event, so I, I just said, you know, might as well get it out there. And I got so much feedback in those last three days that I'm like, wow, this really works. Yeah. So kudos. Um, IGTV. Are you using it? Do you love it? What, you know, what tips can you give everyone? Because I know it's, you know, the newest thing. Anybody? I just started using it. Um, I just started using it. So what I do is whatever videos I'm making on YouTube, I just put them on IGTV. And it's interesting because I'm still learning it myself. But with, with all the apps you have these days, you're able to just crop a video that you take landscape, put it on um, portrait, and you're able to just add it to IGTV. So again, it's a simple click just to use them on all platforms. And then I know we talked briefly about live. Are you going live? I know we had spoken about Facebook Live or using Instagram Live, and if so, like, what do you see the feedback is? Are you getting engagement that you need? <laughs> so live, we realize that it's wonderful when we have things that not everyone can attend, but they want to see what we're doing. So we had a lot of great uh, wellness speakers or lifestyle speakers, um, and. If you're on the other side of the world and you want to see what's happening in Turnberry, hashtag Turnberry Life, follow us. And uh, it, it's been a lot of, um, we've got great feedback from it, so I yeah, highly recommend that. I'm not ready for live, I know my limitations, so I'm not there that. I'm with Dina on that one. <laughs> I mean, I go, I go live, again, when I want to hold myself accountable, and sometimes if it's something interesting and funny that I'm struggling with, um, I tend to share it with people, and they give me a lot of feedback, and then they ask questions, and they're like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that, I'm looking forward to doing that, what are your, what's your advice? So I tend to use it when I'm most uncomfortable, really, and that's what's worked for me. Wow. So... Obviously, we're all using Instagram and social media to generate leads and profits. What do you think specifically that you do that has gotten you the most success to actually generate a lead and then ultimately like close a deal? I don't think it's one thing. Um, it's a social media. It's casting a wide net. 
and just creating that presence. But when I'm out in the field or IRL, as you say, I like that, um, people come up to me and they, they congratulate me on my success. So I might have not had a closing in three or four weeks, but because I'm constantly putting stuff out there and I'm showing that I enjoy what I do and I'm blessed that I get to show beautiful properties in Miami Beach, um, people just feel the vibe and are constantly congratulating me on success, even if I haven't seen a paycheck in over a month. Um, so I definitely think it's important to, to create that atmosphere, even if whatever you're selling, maybe sales are down that month. You know, I, I think it's important to keep a very positive image because people like success and they gravitate towards that. And it's important to stay present. Everyone has a very short attention span. We check everything multiple times a day. But if you're sharing what you're doing, it's a good way to remind people, hey, okay, maybe you haven't seen me in three or four weeks, but I'm still here, come back, let's uh, reconnect and so on. And yeah, that's probably the most important portion of it. So when it comes to generating leads, I love this example because it came from posting um, personal content and it was when I recently had gotten engaged and I was following this other girl that had recently gotten engaged and um, she saw a post of my listing and she uh, DM'd me and said, could you please send me the link to this? And so she, her and her husband came down, they saw two properties and they ended up buying one. All just because we kind of started building this community of you know girls that had just gotten engaged and you're about to get married and you kind of just start following each other and this has happened on um, different occasions too with whether it's my dog or a gym that I go to so bringing that personal and then converting it by posting listings yeah, I would just say show up. Just like you show up for your job, just like you show up every day in life. If you want to have a presence on social media, just show up. Don't think about it too much. Just get active, start sharing, start posting, and that's the first step. And then everything else will organically grow from there. You'll start engaging, people will start engaging for you, and then you'll start, you'll start feeling positive about the things that you do, and it'll become fun. And once it's a part of your daily life, it's, it's, it's not that much work, it's a no-brainer. So I would just say that I show up every day, and then I show up on IG story, and then I show up in people's feed, and then it just all works to better my business because that's what I'm passionate about and that's what I do. So the question is the one thing that we do that makes the difference in social media, and I'm gonna use a one word answer, which is engage. And you can engage on a number of levels, and sometimes you're engaging not directly, like it's more gentle, right? Like being a presence, like Dina and Alyssa both mentioned, that people sometimes congratulate them on success. These are maybe people you haven't seen in months, but you're maintaining a visibility. So you're like behind the scenes engaging. On the other side, when you're doing Instagram stories especially, you can see who watched your Instagram story. So if they didn't comment, if they don't mention it to you, et cetera, you can have it in the back of your mind like, aha, uh -huh, so-and-so totally knows that I drove to Sunny Isles yesterday, right? And then you know that they have that information. So you can increase your effectiveness when you do finally actively engage with them, whether it be IRL, um, on social media, on the phone, etc. Thank you. So before I come to an close, to an end, do you see any trends, like what do you see happening in real estate in any profession on social media? Uh, the biggest trend is definitely video, and uh, lately I've been using the word film, and I think film is more appropriate when you really spend the time and the money to create a production. Um, the films that I've been doing, I mean, they really have been professional, and I almost feel like I'm downgrading them by calling them a video. Um, and when I post one of these films, it's definitely the most likes, the most viewership, the most comments, um, and I feel like I get the after effect for weeks of people commenting, I saw uh, this video or film that you posted. So for sure, um, it's time to invest in uh, curated uh, film product. I think that is definitely the next level. I just wanted to uh, touch base on something we have talked about in the previous topic. So I love to travel and I travel a lot personally and for work, but you have to be careful about what you post because sometimes whenever I see someone, I'm always like, oh my gosh, you were just here and you were just there. And I'm like, no, I'm always in the sales gallery. This is where I spend most of my time. And they're like, no, you were just, you know, in Spain or wherever else. So be a little bit careful, make sure that it's a good mix of work and life um, because sometimes the fun stuff always takes your professional self. So.
Okay, I'll go back um, to piggyback off of Dina again. So I agree that film is becoming um, very relevant and a trend now. And I think, you know, for me, I prefer to watch a video that's informative over than reading an article. So I think that films are going to be more detailed and more informative rather than just articles in print. Yeah. Definitely videos all together. It's changing the game for everybody's business. So if you're not use it, using it, start using it. Because just with Facebook alone and statistics, it says that videos are what get the most reach. And now that Facebook and Instagram are one, I mean, it's just something that it's no matter what, it's only gonna grow and take over. So videos is definitely where it's at. Video. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. So we reached out to our Emory audience and we got a question from MC Crystals. So I know we briefly talked about it, but she asked, how do you get people interested in my content organically? Exclamation point. Hashtags have not worked. Okay, like the short answer is be interesting. <laughs> and I know it sounds hard, but like really, if, if you're like, so there I go in public, like nobody cares. <laughs> Thank you. Good one. Awesome. So thank you so much to everyone. We want to go into Q&A. We hope you all have questions. The other thing that uh, I wanted to mention is we provide a lot of interesting content. So if you can't come up with your own, we share what we're sharing. I'm sure Dina has for 87 parts. We help it turn very, you know, um, and yeah, that, that usually helps. And it gets good, it gets good, in, good engagement. Yeah, and it shows that you like someone that you're resharing. That's true. Mm -hmm. Good answer, Mariana, for the win. Hi, my question is, uh, do you guys choose a specific day of the week that you see the highest engagement, most likes, times, afternoons, mornings, and on which platforms? I like Monday night. Monday night seems to be people are yeah. like laying in bed yeah. and definitely <laughs> recovering from the <laughs> I posted 11, 12 o'clock in the noon, and that's gotten a lot of activity, and also at 6 and 7 o'clock at night. And I don't really worry about the day, but those are more of the times that I've seen engagement is really high. But again, I, I just post whenever. I obviously don't even have a map for it. I like Monday nights also. Um, depending on who your audience is, if there's some event like happening on television, you know, like old-fashioned, old-school television, like a sporting event or something like that that you can't Netflix or YouTube, on the commercials, if you're a sports fan, engage with your people on the commercials because they're in their phone as soon as the ad starts. The other time I found is effective is like midday on a Saturday or a Sunday. So people are like chilling at Starbucks or whatever, kind of scrolling. Thank you. So I actually have two questions for you ladies. Um, the first is if all of you agree that quality of followers is more important than quantity. And also, um, I know one of you mentioned the majority of leads is coming from social media. Is that true for all of you? My business is still very much referral based, but I would definitely say 50-50 of uh, referral versus social media. And your other question, you know, again, I'm going to take the position of, I think quantity is important and you get the quantity when you do a quality post. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I didn't want to send the wrong message with my, I don't have as many followers, I don't have tens of thousands. There is something to be said to be in a pitch or working with someone and they're like, wow, yeah. she's, she has like 20,000 followers. So I don't want to send the impression that I don't want them. I just don't currently have them. So I'm playing with what I have, increasing quality with the end game being quality plus quantity equals Rochelle for the win. Yeah. <laughs> I like to add that in this market, you know, a lot of the buyers, they take some time to think about what they're buying. So it's important to remind them what it is that they're selling because I hope most of us are, are in real estate. And especially if you're buying something for four, five, up to 35 million, you might give it a minute or a year to decide if this is the right place for you. And uh, a lot of our brokers and buyers are on social media and, you know, most of them decide after they've given it uh, a considerable amount of thought and they've seen what the lifestyle that you're selling really is like. So be sure to engage them on a constant basis. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, how many of you try scheduling your regular posts with anything like tailpipe? Mm -hmm. 
you. I have uh, played with scheduled posts. I use HubZoo and um, the certain types of posts that are like recurring, I call them kind of filler stuff. When, especially when I'm super busy, it kind of saves me so I don't just disappear from view. I know there are a lot of um, options out there that just happens to be the platform I know how to use. I actually have an answer for that. So what I found, because I do a lot of social media research, there are specific, I think it's like later and maybe even planally, or you'd have to double check that, because Instagram can ban, like won't you know either share it or you'll have issues when you move content over. Um, so you should definitely check that. I mean, I've heard the number one is for you to do it yourself. I've also heard on the hashtag, now it's going to 10. Um, Max, I mean, there's a few, so we have a few members in here that are marketing geniuses and social media, so I would definitely ask them to. Um, but that's, that's what I've learned from there. Any other questions? Um, so this is for everyone, I guess. So for social media, I know a lot of thought goes into the planning of posts. What apps do you guys use besides, of course, Instagram, Facebook, to create the content? Is there anything that makes it look more sexy, pleasing, things like that? There's a thousand apps and it gets overwhelming, but there's apps like InShot, Camera, I'm, um, Canva, which you can create like flyers. InShot, you can crop videos that are maybe landscape versus vertical. Um, there, I mean, I literally have a list of them and everything that I use it for. I can share it with you if you like, because they all work for something different. And whenever I want to do something really quick and on the go, you just have an app and you use it. So there's another one that's called Planet, which is like Planly. I don't use it anymore, but in the beginning I did, and it actually went in and told you what times when you posted got the most engagements and likes, and then it showed you um, it, uh, what days worked better for you. Um, again, there's so many different apps, but I'll, like, I'll share the whole folder with you. Yeah. There's also Unfold is like that. Oh yeah, Unfold, Unfold is Unfold. amazing. Really pretty. You can do two videos going at the same time. You can do yeah. a, a layout. You can Unfold. actually make your story. Unfold is great. Yeah. And then what's nice with Canva, I know you mentioned, you can kind of like save so you stay on brand. So you can kind of create your like template. your, yeah, like Instagram story template. And then you just kind of swap pictures, but you always have like that same font or that same aesthetic mm -hmm. that goes with your brand that's really nice. So it's really easy to use. You kind of just have to play around with it, but you save everything. It's free. It's free. Um, All of these, pretty much yeah. most of these apps but are But Canva free. use on your computer. It's really hard to use from your phone. Any other questions? Music and do a voiceover. So if you have a video and you want to talk over the video afterwards, you can actually do a voiceover in the app for that photo or that video. So that's been really cool. Thank you. Um, for those that have the higher following, how do you get there? Uh, and honestly, there's like, I mean, I've, I continue to get emails about, hey, I want to boost your social media quality followers. Did you ever do that? Did it work? Did you pay for it? Was it worth it? Oh, that goes. So mine were all organic. I started my platforms like five years ago, so I've had it for some time. But when I found the most followers um, coming was when it was life events, kind of, you know, getting engaged, getting married, getting a dog, getting like personal connections and kind of creating a community. And that's what grew my followers the most. Also being like tagged in other big accounts too, like she talks about. Yeah, that, it, like, I think when I started doing like things with the association and going to these state level organizations where other people were tagging and reposting, it kind of catches a win. So sometimes you want to like capitalize on maybe you have someone with, uh, you know, one of your friends has a lot of followers and, and you just want to kind of engage and maybe do a video together or collaborate with other people who have a whole different following than you. Sometimes that collaboration can bring you a whole different market of people and, you know, people to engage with you and that's how you can increase your followers too. To answer your question, um, I get those emails too. And naturally I was curious and I'm obsessed with likes. So this one company emailed me like two weeks ago and said, I can give you a minimum of a thousand likes on a photo. So I go, how do you do that? 
And within like five minutes, he replies, look at this photo. It was actually the photo for, for this event, like the headshot that they used. And from 572 likes, I had 1,572 likes. So I don't know how they did it, but literally within two wow. minutes, I had an extra 1,000 likes. But then when I went through my page, you know, all my photos have 400 likes, 800 likes, 600, and all of a sudden this one photo has 1,600 likes. Like, so that to me felt inauthentic. You know, and your followers, they're gonna also notice something like that. Like there's accounts that I follow that one day have a thousand uh, followers and then two weeks later they have 20,000 followers. And then I go and look at their photos and they're only getting like 70 likes. So immediately I bought, bought her followers, you know, like, and I frowned down. <laughs> <laughs> what works, their own. What works better, I found is find your prospective clients, friend them, and also the same for brokers. You know, wherever you may be, find those people and make it more organic. Um, to answer your question also, we've done a few social media panels. One person said that I thought was good is like, don't be afraid to have too many followers. Like, you should go out and engage with other people the same way you want them to be engaged with you. And, you know, there's micro-influencers now. Not everyone has to have hundreds of thousands of followers because you'll also see the change in algorithm. There are p those that do buy their followers, but there are those that don't and did grow organically, but like their picture didn't get seen, so they didn't get as many likes for that specific photo or it didn't relate to their audience. So, you know, there's no right or wrong. I mean, we all recommend, obviously, don't buy your followers because you people are looking and people talk about it all the time. As soon as you see who's liking, I mean, you see bots, then you start seeing like their accounts and they're not real and it starts to go away and it starts to look, you know, really fake. So be okay if you're under 10,000, you know, you're gonna grow. It takes years for, you know, accounts to get to a million. I mean, something maybe didn't have a million, do a million followers in a year I and mean, she's been doing it for years. So be okay with it, we're all struggling to get there, we're all on the same journey, and just have fun with it and enjoy the process. But also realize what makes you money, and focus on that. That's probably more important than yeah. getting how many of our followers you'd like to get. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay. So again, I wanted to thank all of you for coming, and I did want you to take a moment, if you can, we're also here to build our network. There's a room full of, um, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, dear. Okay. You said you took 4,000 square feet someplace. Yes. Where is it? So we are on US 1 and Hallandale. We'll be opening oh, the next few weeks. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Thank you. It's between like Hallandale and Pembroke. it is, but what side? What, it's on the it's west, west side. If you're coming, yeah, on the west side. <laughs> it's in front of Marty Gross, I think Silver so, Bottom. Uh, what is it? Big Easy Casino. Yes. We're right in front. Very good. Yeah, so um, thank you. So again, so I wanted to, you know, look to your left, look to your right. We're all about building relationships. There are so many amazing women here that are looking to grow their business. They're looking to make connections. So before you leave today, please try to take a moment to introduce yourself to somebody. Introduce yourself to these mentors. You know, these women got here because they're hustling and they want to grow their brand and business and they've gotten to a great platform. Reach out to them, reach out to me. This is why I created the Emory. I've always wanted to connect with other women. I'm a mom to three little boys and I had a really hard time connecting with other women who were working. I felt alone. Um, I felt embarrassed to work. And I needed this community. Like you all, you guys are, you know, this means a lot to me. And I wanted something different from South Florida. I wanted women to feel, you know, empowered and powerful and excited to have a career. Um, you know, we're not in New York. New York said hustle and bustle. We're in, you know, this town, but we're all here together. And that's why I decided to create the Emory. I hope you can all join me there. These are the types of events. These are the type of women we want, you know, for everyone to feel welcome and to feel heard and to feel appreciated. So if you have any questions about the Emory, I would love for you to ask me to join us. Um, and thank you so much again for being here. We're so happy to have such a great turnout. If you haven't seen our model residence yet, it's, 
in the back, a little bit hidden, but Farida, Natalie, myself, uh, would love to give you a tour. And if you need content, follow the Timber Ocean Club, follow the Emery, show our mom Yeah, friends. sorry, where can everyone find you? I'm at Golden Dina. Golden Dina, D-I-N-A. <laughs> I'm at Alyssa Morgan Miami and Alyssa underscore the Jills Miami. I'm at Bethany Miami. Rochelle.tv. Uh, Mary Anna Shulga and Territory Ocean Club. And we're at the Emory Co. Nice. So thank you. Thank you again. Grab their coffee, beverages, a ton of food. And please build your network. <laughs>